Hey, welcome to the long lane anticipated mid game guide. If you haven't watched the early game one, I highly suggest you do. Even if you think you have passed that stage of the game, you might find some useful tips and tricks you might have missed. If you did watch the early game guide, you should have full glaciate set, a raider's axe, an easy method to get experience for enchanting, heart of the mountain tree, and about 200 fairy souls, hopefully. And of course, a sugar cane farm that you can farm for farming, alchemy levels, and a little bit of coins. Till this point on your profile, we didn't really need to deal a lot of damage. The only mobs we fought were goblins and glacite walkers, which don't really need great gear. But for a further progression, we're going to have to invest some time in gathering some talisman. You should have unlocked a bunch of talisman bag upgrades from your redstone minions. So let's go ahead and fill up those slots. I'll provide you with a list of easy talisman that you should get, and I will try to sort them in chronological order so you don't have to worry about which ones to go for first, and you can just go down the list. Now the order might not be perfect as I'm doing this whole list in hindsight, so bear with me. Short disclaimer, we really should have a god potion for this, otherwise some talisman might be a little harder to get and you might have to skip them for now. And for a lot of these race related talisman, you might want to have a grappling hook because you should have gotten one already from all the resources coming from spider and cave spider minions. Now for talisman, a lot of these you won't be able to get right now, but I will give you the full list so you can start working on your talisman throughout the entire mid game. Buy all of the talisman from the adventurer, get the farming talisman from the wheat collection, the speed talisman from the sugarcane collection, vaccine talisman from potato collection, you can get the poisonous potatoes from killing graveyard zombies, talisman of coins and a magnetic talisman from the emerald collection, feather talisman from feather collection, potion affinity talisman from the netherworld collection, campfire badge from the cultist and upgrade it as much as you can. Whichever tier of Ring of Love that you can obtain from Romero Crest and upgrade it along the way. Melody's here. And before you open your mouth and start a rant about your ping and use it as an excuse to skip the talisman, I created a new profile where I got Foraging 5, went to the park and tried to see how long a Melody's hair would take with my ping, which was ranging around from 140 to 180. At the time, it took me 12 minutes. Well, the actual Melody took me 8 minutes. I'll upload an unlisted video with the entire uncut footage of me doing melodies, so you literally have no excuse to not do it. Click the man in the top right to see the full video. Wolf Spa from the Foraging Island race in the park. Cheetah Talisman from the Dungeon Hub races. Gravity Talisman, you can kill Obsidian Defenders for the Obsidian. King Talisman is pretty self-explanatory. Bat Talisman, which requires the Dark Oak Island from Dark Oak Collection. Word Affinity Talisman from Oak Collection. Piggy Bank from Pork Chop Collection. Talisman of Power, which requires Jumps from Collection 4, and it's pretty easy to obtain. I recommend just looting the chests around the Crystal Hollows to get the Jumpstones instead of mining them manually. Emerald Ring from the Emerald Collection. Upgrade your Zombie Talisman to a Ring. Spider Talisman from Broodmother and upgraded to a ring. Wolf Talisman and upgraded into a ring. Red Claw Talisman, the Healing Talisman from Lilypad Collection. Sea Creature Talisman from Sponge Collection. Pig's Foot from the Ender Race. I recommend having an aspect of the end for this one. Haste Ring from Cobblestone Collection. Chumming Talisman from Chumming, I guess. Experience Artifact from Lapis Collection. Night Vision Charm from Mushroom Collection. Titanium Talisman. Draconic Talisman. Personal Compactor from the Redstone Collection and Personal Deleter as well from the Iron Collection. Jungle Amulet. Now this might seem like a terrifying talisman to get, but trust me, there are discords that share locations of chests that contain jungle hearts. You can join some of these discords or just have friends that announce to you when they find one and you can just go ahead and claim the heart and work on this talisman throughout, you know, while you're playing. It's a pretty easy one, it just requires 4 jungle hearts and you just trade it at Odava. Bingo Talisman. Yes, you will do bingo. Don't even start the argument, okay? Bingo is a must. Day Night Crystal. Mining Quartz in the Nether Isles, but minions work too. I don't really recommend minions as manual grinding when it comes to mining resources is way faster. Farmer Orb, which is just mining glowstone in the Nether Isles. Soulful Pile from Enderman Slayer. Hunter Talisman. It might seem like a terrifying talisman, it's actually not that bad, like 2 hours of grinding gold and mines at the one without even like a decent setup will easily get you a hunter talisman. These next two you will need to loot share with people or you can try to kill them yourself. Lava talisman, try to kill magma cubes to unlock the minion. Alchemist sells magma cream to level up the minion. Fire talisman, 
from killing blazes to unlock the, the blaze minion. Shops also sell the blaze rods to upgrade the, the minion. Sadly, I don't think the barbarian faction has a shop where you can buy blaze, blaze rods, which means you're gonna have to do the mage faction quest if you want to unlock that shop. Before you can catch any of the nether sea creatures, we can get an Audrey's Tooth. Scarf Grimoire once we start doing dungeons, which I will cover during the dungeon progression in the part 2. Treasure Talisman, also from dungeons. Jacobus Register is a pretty easy talisman that requires 21.5 million coins for a legendary talisman. Honestly, it's not that bad once we get a mining setup going, which will be in the part 2 of the guide. Fish Affinity Talisman from fishing. Bits Talisman and any of the Abbey cases. I personally recommend the blue but red one for extra combat wisdom, but you know you're the judge pick any ones that you find useful i will say none of the samsung abbey phones and the razor abbey phone case are kind of like eh so i would recommend one of the wisdom ones now special event or mayor related talisman frozen chicken you can get that during late winter new year cake bag which costs 200,000 coins during the new year celebration candy talisman during spooky event you can probably get one at candy talisman right when you start the game if you get a spooky chug tooth necklace is really easy during a fishing fiesta mineral talisman during a mining fiesta beastmaster quest during mythological creature event bad person talisman during the spooky event and lucky hoof and maybe even the eternal hoof if you get you know kind of decent into fishing and you can fish grim reapers during the spooky fishing time so most of these are tier talismans, so just get whichever tier um, you can at the moment and upgrade them along the way. These are all the talismans you should be thinking about during mid-game. Now, I didn't list when you should be upgrading a lot of these tier talismans, so you're just gonna have to look at the resources you have available and decide when you want to go for the upgrades yourself. But this should be your overall talisman progression. If I miss some or the guide gets outdated, I dearly apologize. Of course, I won't mention things like Dante Talisman, Crab Hat, or like Spooky Talisman, as those are kind of like a self-given thing that you should get them when you have the opportunity to participate in one of these events. And for Talisman Reforges, at the start, there's not much you can choose from. You have Starter Powers. The best option would be for two of this if you're lacking crit chance, and use Warrior if crit chance is not a problem. None of the intermediate powers are good besides maybe Commando, but it requires 250 magical power to unlock, and at that point you're probably going to have better powers to use. Talking about better powers, let's start with the melee ones. Silky is probably the best reforge when it comes to how easy it is obtained and how good it is. Just get a cow head and leech the arachne kills from other people spawning it in the spiders then really have enough spools and it's especially good for mastiff pooch if you do decide to go for it which i will talk about in the gear section of the video the opposite of silky are acacia bit houses for the forceful reforge it's quite a good reforge the problem is it's quite expensive because you need 54 stacks of enchanted acacia and until you have a true capitator that's quite rough it is an option if you like forging as much as i do for mages, there's a very easy option. Watchers in the end drop monocles for the sighted reforge, which is, I mean, it's great. It gives a lot of mana. And once you get started in dungeons, you have the ability to get bloody, which is a great balance between strength and crit damage. It gives a little bit of uh, intelligence. And for the dungeon progression, we'll also unlock the shaded reforge, which in my opinion is just better bloody. The problem with these reforges is that they give almost no attack speed. So for attack speed, there is an awesome option from Wolf Slayer. They drop four balls for the itchy reforge, which is a great option if you're using short bows, which are very attack speed dependent. And if you're using melee, I would say focus on on you know just one hit damage, especially for farming zealots or zealot bruisers. You don't really need the attack speed and I don't think you should worry about it until you're very late into the game. If you're enjoying the video, I'd really appreciate if you click that subscribe button, maybe even a like. I want to make a short shameless plug here that I stream on Twitch almost every single day. We are grinding on the Iron Man. If you are interested in endgame Iron Man content, hey, feel free to check it out and uh, hey the more support the more i'm motivated to push out the part two of the guide so hey do your job and i'll do mine now <laughs> have fun with the rest of the video now for gear 
Now, why did we put all that effort in Talisman? Well, there is a very good reason. Our next progression are some gear upgrades that will last us throughout the whole guide. So buckle up and pay attention because there are a lot of alternatives to everything I'm going to mention. So you'll have to pick the progression path you think you'd enjoy the most and I'll give you the pros and cons of every path. The first thing that we need to start working on is an aspect of the end. Probably the most used item in the game. Great weapon overall, but the ability is what we want it for. It's exceptional utility for everything you do. If you have a god pot, you should work on forging because you have a history. Get your forging minions up. You want to just make sure you have 50,000 wood collection so your raider's axe has the most strength. And killing goblins should have gotten a little bit of that kill counter up for extra weapon damage. God potion, full fierce glaze side armor with a sharp raider's axe. And your newly acquired talisman should be more than enough damage to one shot the 4.5k HP Enderman, which drop the least amount of pearls, but they drop Ender Armor, which is what we're looking for. Now, Ender Armor is fantastic. You do want the full set, including the equipment, and while you're working on that, you'll get a lot of Ender Pearls for your aspect at the end. Make sure to buy out all the Blaze Powder from the Alchemist Store. You'll need 32 stacks of it for your AOTE. Grab extras for the enderman minion in the future it's pretty cheap once you get your full ender set you should be able to one shot the 9000 hp enderman because they drop the most ender pearls and you have a chance for an enderman pet which is very unlikely but unlikely is better than nothing if you can't one shot the enderman you're probably doing something wrong that can be your wood collection low kill count on your raider's axe low amount of talismans or no god pot also, the Void Sword is a pretty huge upgrade from Raider's Axe if you do have the 200,000 coins to spend on it and have acquired all pieces of the Ender Armor set. Once your AOT is obtained, you're going to start struggling with mana. There's not much you can really do about it, but an extremely useful step to take would be getting the full Crystal Armor by destroying the End Crystals during the Ender Dragon fight. This set provides great mana bonuses and is going to be the best mana set you can get until Vyas Dragon Armor. Talking about dragons. Here comes the first biggest step on your profile and this is where you can choose what you want to do next. A lot of people don't enjoy killing zealots for ice to get dragon armor but let me try to convince you otherwise because dragon armor is the best and fastest way to progress your profile. Strong dragon armor is extremely powerful for melee. Wise dragon is a fantastic mage armor. All dragon is actually pretty decent at early stages of dungeons. But protected dragon is insanely good tank armor young armor is amazing utility for speed and like foraging and superior is still best in slot for pet luck and quite useful for pet grinding so it's fair to say that almost every dragon set in the game is it has its use and not only that it's the best for when you're starting dungeons i'll come back to dungeon progression in part two of the guide Killing dragons gives you a chance for a pet. You also get dragon claws, which is one of the best weapon reforges. And you get one of the best weapons for your current progression, which is the aspect of the dragons. Which now is in an even better spot now that the dragon fuse glove is also a thing, giving it 35 weapon damage and 50 strength. And the things to craft one come from farming zealous and dragons. In my personal humble opinion, this is pretty much where you should spend your entire time during mid game. Everything in the end island is very accessible early on and you should play through the content you want it or not. Things that I want you to get in the end island before you move on. A bunch of dragon armor pieces and hopefully a couple of full completed sets in case you want to start dungeons. AOTD with a fabled reforge but does have a mining 22 requirement to apply. So do your daily commissions. This is going to be your best weapon until a livid dagger or shadow fury. But even then, aspect of the dragons has almost better stats than the livid dagger the only thing that pushes the livid dagger over the top is the attack speed and the fact that it just scales better in dungeons as a dragon fuse gone it does not so on hit damage outside of dungeons is actually better with an aspect of the dragons it's just the livid dagger is a more well-rounded better weapon dragon fuse glove is going to be your best in slot glove until you get gone of contagion that is the case if you actually go for the aspect of the dragons but even then it could be considered to be the best glove as it's pretty easy to craft dragon fade cloak is insanely good like it's probably the best installed cloak for anything you're going to do in the end 15 strength 90 health and 15 defense is amazing 
You should also have a dragon short bow, which is going to be your best bow until you get the spirit short bow from floor 4. Mythic Endermite Pet is, of course, a fantastic help when you're going to try to get all the ritual residue for all these crafts, and it's extremely cheap to craft. Max out the superior dragon chance and the zealot chance perks in the dragon essence shop. Every piece of superior dragon armor that you get is really useful, and you might want to even make it renowned if you do have the horns. Increase the pet luck to grind my gel more efficiently. My gel is going to be your best money making method until you get into mining. Draconic artifact would be great, but tessellated pearls might be trouble for now. Just have everything else ready for you until you get a decent mining setup to grind out the lapis. This is pretty much your entire gear progression in the mid game. The next upgrade would be dungeon armors like Shadow Assassin, which I will mention during the dungeon progression in part two, but for now you're set. Alternative gear options. Now, if you really don't want to grind zealots and dragons, there are some alternatives. And for those who are going to grind through the end content, might not want to skip this part as you might pick up something useful as well. Maybe you guys enjoy fishing more than zealots. The closest alternative for dragon armor is werewolf. You get it by killing werewolves that you can fish up during spooky time and having fishing 17. Werewolf itself is quite the glass cannon set. It has high defense but really low health bonuses which means if you're a low skyblock level and don't have much health coming from levels, your effective HP will be quite fragile. But werewolf is the best DPS armor set you have available until Shadow Assassin or Crimson Armor and even then it can be easily compared to these two. Ferocity is quite a fascinating set and it does beat out most of the dragon armors when it comes to damage per second, but it's not as well rounded as dragon armor. It is the only armor in the game that gives the ferocity stat which is extremely good for bosses and slayers. If you do choose the werewolf progression path, getting into dungeons is going to be a lot harder and the weapons that come from fishing aren't particularly easy. You have the shredder that does well against sea creatures but it's a fishing rod so it's kind of annoying to use but it does do a lot of damage like a lot of damage it has high ferocity high damage and strength so you could consider it as a as a very fair alternative to an aspect of the dragons there's also the phantom rod which is one of the best weapons in the mid game and will carry you through dungeons it can be dungeonized and deals great damage but where it excels at is dealing with mini bosses for those who never use the weapon it's a rod that latches on to your enemies and all you need to do is left click until the mob dies. It essentially just whips your enemies without giving them a chance to fight back because the knockback is crazy. If you continue fishing, you'll also unlock the soul whip which is one of the best weapons in the game. Its damage is not particularly high but it has a great ability that is a little annoying to use when clearing dungeons but soul whip is fantastic for clearing large amounts of mobs stacked up in a group and it's great for taking boss aggro in floor 7. It's a weapon that carried me throughout the entirety of floor 7 back in the day and it really excels in terracotta phase on floor 6. Do not underestimate the soul whip ability. It deals melee damage which means it can hit most monsters that wouldn't otherwise take damage from mage or ranged attacks from, I mean, from a ranged attack. So it's one of the two weapons that can actually do that. The Axe of the Shredded can do the same thing but it costs mana. So soul whip is really good it's a great alternative fishing when it comes to gear is all right werewolf armor is always useful and the weapons that come from fishing are fantastic in and outside of dungeons the main flaw is this path is that it's really slow it's rng dependent and also time dependent because most of the gear that comes from fishing is during spooky fishing so kind of have to make sure you <laughs> participate in every event if fishing and zealots are not particularly fun to you maybe mining and forging is a little more fun. For this progression path, we have Mastiff Armor with Pooch Sword. Mastiff itself is quite annoying to grind, but it's probably the fastest progression path on the list. It's okay when starting out dungeons, but it won't get you further than floor two, so it's not really good if you want to get carried through dungeons. Progression here is simple. Get Growth Armor, wear it for an achievement, because why not? Put it in the museum, because it's free Skywalk XP, and then try to grind tier two. Maybe if you can even do tier three spends for Wolf Teeth. You don't need a lot of teeth and once you do get all the teeth you need you can start grinding gold and mines at the one to get mastiff armor then get a shaman sword and that should be enough for tier 4 spends where you'll start grinding the teeth needed for a pooch sword which is kind of expensive honestly this really isn't a bad option at all you can deal some massive damage with mastiff and pooch 
Even in late game, it slaps and you can probably one-shot ghosts with Mastiff Pooch. The problem with this progression path is dungeons. It really doesn't scale well and is really the only downside. The last alternative on the list is rushing dungeons. It's my least recommended path, but it's there. And the method is to just run entrance floors as a mage. These can be solo runs, you just need a frag bot, you can just start the dungeon and cast your ultimate ability and the lightning strike will kill most of the mobs and you just collect the loot. Get a dreadlord sword and rotten or heavy boots and leggings. In my opinion rotten is better because of the health but heavy can work too. Then purchase dark goggles and a stone chest plate from Aphelia which will cost you around 160,000 coins. If you don't have the extra 80,000 for the stone chest plate, a heavy one will do. This armor set is more than enough to go through floor 1 where you will be getting your catacombs level up and getting better quality items to replace your gear. Once you get around catacomb 6 you can move to floor 2 where you'll be getting even better quality items and once your catacomb is 9 you can go to floor 3 where you can kill zombie soldiers and their armor is quite decent. Sadly it only provides defensive bonuses, all your damage is going to come from the Vice Reforge and Dreadlord Sword's ability of course playing as a mage. With 3 fourths zombie soldier armor and dark goggles, you can easily do floor 3. Well, you'll have the option of completing 150 runs, which will get you a free adaptive chest plate and pants, and you can purchase the boots yourself. The full set isn't really worth it, but doing this many floor 3s will get your catacombs to 16, which will unlock the hyper cleaver, which will be the best weapon for in and outside of dungeons. It's quite decent, actually. For armor, you'll have 3 fourths adaptive, which is quite bad outside of dungeons, so the best in slot armor would be collecting skeleton soldier armor, which means while in dungeons, try to keep the best quality pieces of skeleton soldier and try to collect the whole set. It's really not great. The only actually decent armor that comes from dungeons is in floor 5, which is shadow assassin. Now you could probably get carried in three fourths um zombie soldier and dark goggles with a dreadlord sword in floor five until they get a couple you know of shadow assassin pieces yeah that is an option but i'm not a big fan i would call that being carried but hey that's up to you to decide but it is an option it's not a great one i will talk more about dungeon progression in the part two of the guide so i don't really want to get far into the dungeons but hey shadow assassin is an option and you can get it pretty early on. Overall, this progression path is really fast and easy to get started in, but it doesn't really scale well. Once you do start, you know, grinding to floor 1s, 2s, and 3s, the upgrades don't really seem that substantial for the amount of time you spend, and only in floor 5 you actually see results. So, I don't really recommend this path. I do recommend getting a Dreadlord Sword to use outside of dungeons, as the ability does quite decent damage. Now let's move on to the next part of the guide, which is going to be minion progression. Let's expand on what I've given you during the early game guide. With the newly acquired gear, you should hopefully be combat 24 and can enter nether isles. If you're not, go kill some 9k endermen, they're decent XP and drop a pet you really want to have, so why not? Now that you have access to nether isles, your damage is not going to be great, but it should be enough to unlock mammal cube and blaze minions. Plus, you should have enough that dragon short bow to kill ghasts and even blazes with. Also, the voodoo doll is great. Voodoo doll is a fantastic weapon and I really recommend getting it. Uh, you should really look into it. You should be able to also complete the barbarian side of the quest. You can also do the mage one. It's a little harder, so I rec would recommend barbarian. Also, red sand is faster than mycelium to mine. And... Uh, that's how you can unlock one of the action specific minions and start working on your reputation. Once you get into mining, we also want to worry about a flower minion. And that means that you should now have access to every single minion besides woodling and inferno minions. And of course the mycelium or the red sand minion depending on which faction you chose. I will talk more about slayers in the part 2 of the guide so don't worry about the slayer minions for too much right now. Just worry about unlocking as many minions as you can with your newly acquired gear. I want to see at least 24 minion slots. Now, what do we want from minions during mid game? Our options are quite wide, but there's a couple must have minions for now. If you still are not done maxing your redstone collection, make sure you max it out before replacing them. You also want a cocoa bean minion. Get it to at least 37, put super compactor in it. You can get multiple 
minions, but super compactors are a little expensive. The reason you want cocoa beans is you can passively work on your first replenish book. The minions should generate enough resources in a couple weeks, which during that time you can start working on your cocoa bean farm and get a cocoa chopper, which is where that replenish book is going on. You also want to place down minions to unlock all the talismen that are unlocked from collections. I don't think you should worry about mining and crop related minions as they're faster to grind manually and it's not really worth the minion slots right now. But an iron minion could be considered as it's the slowest ore to grind and you're going to want iron for the personal deleter and tarantula helmet later on. You most definitely want a sheep minion to start working on the sheep pet. A really heavy focus on blaze and ice minions. Frozen blaze, as much as I hate it, it's a pretty good armor set. It's extremely expensive and pet locks you into having a blaze pet, but it will carry you through dungeons and just out, it's great outside of dungeons as well. Also with ice you can get the frozen scythe which is also really good. Now a lot of people might say well, it's not really worth to go for the frozen blaze, right? And I would say that during your mid game, you will be working on mining like a lot a lot of mining and what are your minions going to be doing well there's not much use for your minions but frozen blaze so while you're working on your mining progression and you get that thing maxed out by the time you come back to your minions you should probably have enough resources to craft frozen blaze and a blaze pen fishing minions you get a decent portion of your minion slots as leveling fishing early on is pain and you're going to have to max out those collections plus enchanted cooked fish for legendary whale pet are kind of hard to come by so make sure you stock up on fish and also fish bait as it is the best bait in the game for the rest of the minion slots you should place clay in combat or farm animal related minions to max out the collections for scabble xp will grind the other collections manually don't underestimate the bonuses you get from scabble levels and please focus on them it's kind of important that you start working on minion upgrades like lava buckets personal compactors which is the most efficient to grind manually for all your minions to get those bad boys set up you should also think about getting some corrupted soil upgrades to start working on the implosion belt you might have to upgrade your minion storage if you do get access to that mycelium a snail pet is great but you can just also farm the mycelium manually with just a gold shovel it's really not that bad if you're going for a couple upgrades and that pretty much marks the end of our minions which also marks the end of the guide i'm gonna split up the guide into two parts because there's a lot to talk about in regards to mid game so the next guide will contain money making method the entirety of your mining progression i will talk about pets slayers and entirely covered dungeons hopefully you're excited for that that guide should come out a week from this guide hopefully if everything goes right and the no annoying mares pop up that i have to focus on hopefully the guide was helpful and maybe if you did find this helpful you could subscribe like and uh Leave a nice comment in the comment, uh, comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.